So we have covered how to uh, create new documents and set them up for interactivity within InDesign and how to import uh, files or images into our layouts and also how to add text and control text through styles. In this video, we're going to showcase what you can do with the objects themselves within InDesign, meaning in terms of layout, changing, modifying the look and feel of those objects. What can you do with those objects inside InDesign? Uh, and that is basically what can you do with the frames, with the containers that uh, house whatever media you're bringing in into InDesign. So for that, I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to maintain the same setup as I had with previous documents. I'm going to use the iPad format and I'm going to click create. Uh, and now I want to go ahead and create a couple of frames. I'm going to use a circular frame, an ellipse frame. I'm pressing shift to control the uh, the constraint proportions for this and I want to change actually I want to change my workspace back to essentials and so with essentials this changes all of these things change let me go ahead and close all this I don't need this open and what I want to do is I want to uh, change the fill color for this I'm gonna make it the powder blue that we used before and then I'm gonna use uh, let's say uh, an outline stroke uh, with color white for this so I'm going to increase about five pixels on the outline of that. So now let's say I bring in an image into this and my layout is looking slightly flat. So let me place an image in here. I'm going to use the um, from the images that we used for the previous exercise. Let me go ahead and bring in one of those space trees uh, uh, as if I can find the folder. There it is. And I'm going to use the I'm going to use the cinema rolls this time. I'm going to place the cinnamon rolls in there and this came up because I had the options in that window. Remember, I had clicked show options when I imported the text last time. So I want to turn that off right now. I don't want to see that. I simply want to import the image and it's going to just place it in there. Then I'm going to use fit to frame, fit proportionally to frame. And uh, that pretty much gives me the image. Now, I know that I have an outline here that is white on the stroke. So if I select that frame, I can go back and actually I'm going to make it yellow so we can actually see it. Now, let's say my my document when I test it, when I see pressing W to see what the layout is looking like, if it looks too flat and I want to separate that and I want to add some kind of an effect to this or say, for example, by the way, just like an illustrator and uh, Adobe Animate, I have the ability to create layers here as well. So if I want to create a new layer, this is my window for creating layers, this icon right here. You can also go to Windows, Layers to open it up. And so if you open that up, you have the ability to create separate layers to separate objects depending on the layer that you want. So let's say, for example, I want my layer 2 to be the background. I can double click it and rename it, giving it the double click in it to open up its properties, then rename it BG for background. And let's say I want to have a box that's going to cover the entirety of my background in that layer. And then I want to apply a color to it. Say I want to apply the powder blue. So now let's say this is what I want my layout to look like. Now, when I preview this, my layout looks somewhat flat. I, I'm not liking the fact that this is not popping in up from the background. And part of the reason for that is because of the color scheme that I have going on. So I can either start working with the color scheme, but let's say you are constrained by the color scheme that you've been provided by your client. So what do you do? One of those things is to actually apply effects to the objects that you have been creating. Just like you would in Illustrator or in Photoshop, or in uh, uh, animate, you would probably add a glow or a drop shadow to something like this. To apply those, to change the object settings for this, you need to select the object itself, in this case, the frame that contains that, and you can right click and go to either effects, or you can go to object and then look for effects in here. You also have other things for the effects, such as fitting, which we saw before, that from the right click, or you also have certain at certain options such as corner options which allow you to change the the corners of rectangles of frames or uh graphics that uh not sorry uh shapes that you're creating so in this case we're just going to focus on effects so the effects basically contain most of the effects that you know from other programs such as drop shadow inner shadow and so on you can actually save those settings as an as an object at style so just like you would with text uh, paragraphs and so on. You also have the ability to, to, to save um, object styles. 
So let's go ahead and click on this drop shadow really quick just to create a drop shadow and the window will open up that allows you to preview what you are creating. So if you click on preview, you will see what the drop shadow is going to look like on your final product. Then you have the ability to change the mode for that particular drop shadow when it, whether you want it to be any of the existing modes. Remember, multiply keeps the dark and removes the light and screen keeps the light and removes the dark. That's the difference between those two. Uh, you also can change the opacity, the distance offset on X and Y, the actual distance from the object, the direction of the shadow. So that's something that you can actually do dynamically. Uh, if you click use global light, then all your shadows will be pointing in the same direction, which would be a good idea if you want to maintain consistency amongst objects. Uh, so, I mean, you have a lot of options. You can turn that off from here, not a drop shadow, let's say, but I want an inner shadow, then that will create an inner shadow for your shape. So you have different options to play with. You can create an outer glow, an inner glow, uh, depending on the option that you're working with. So let's say I want to create this and I want to increase its size and I want to make this uh, screen, let's say, um, I want to, do I have inner glow? Yes, that's what I have. So if I want to change the mode for it or the color, you can see that there's a little glow change over here. Take a look on the edge of the object. So you have basically the same settings for uh, uh, effects, what are called effects in this program, uh, as you would in a program like Photoshop or Illustrator. Outside of those effects, you also have transparency settings. So if you want to change the transparency settings of the entire box, which you can, you would go to the transparency option. You also find that, by the way, let me cancel out of this and go back again, object, effects, transparency, and that opens up on the very top option. And you have the ability to change this to modes, as you can see, as you would in Illustrator or Photoshop, and to change the actual opacity of the, of the entire box. Now you'll notice that the outline when semi-dim basically is going the entire thing is semi-transparent and that is because you are affecting the object the entire object meaning the actual frame now let me bring that back up to 100 percent and click ok and now instead of selecting the object i'm going to select the content inside the object the actual image you will notice that with the image selected and i know that because i see i clicked on that circle in the middle the guide and I can see that the outline has, select, uh, has been selected, meaning that I have selected the image, the content inside the frame. I can now change the opacity of that image through the properties window for that image. So if I go here and I turn it to 50% or whatever percentage, you will notice that my frame remains at 100% while the content is changing opacity. So you have the ability to create, to, to manipulate both of them independently. You also have the ability to apply shadow, I mean, to apply effects to the content only instead of having it applied to the object. So both the object and the frame that contains the object, I mean the object, the, the content and the frame that contains that, that content are completely separate. The frame is one thing. What's inside it is a completely separate thing and they behave separately. Remember, objects are when you click on the actual frame. The content is completely separate and you can access that by either clicking on that circle in the middle, as you will see. In my case, I've, you don't see the circle because of the capturing software that I'm using. It, it removes that for some reason, uh, but you will see it on your, uh, on your files when you start working with this. You will see like a, a pale uh, white circle in the middle. And that's one way to capture that. Another way is to actually use the white arrow tool. So if you select the white arrow tool and click on the actual content, you will select the content. Or if you select the object with the arrow tool, you select the object. So you have the ability to select both of them independently that way. And they behave separately. So whatever you're creating, whatever uh, object effects you're applying could be applied either to the object, con to the container, to the shape, to the shape, to the frame, sorry, to the frame. Or if you click on the content itself via properties, you can affect the content separately. And that is how you control the, the, the actual uh, opacity of objects within uh, InDesign. So now let me place this here. And in the same layer, I am going to create a text box. Let me actually create a text box down here at the bottom. Let me lock. You'll notice that my cursor changes to a circle cursor when I'm rolling over this. And part of the reason is because let me go. Let me get out of preview. Let me press W. Remember, we created that 
shape, that blue background on layer two, on this layer down here in the background layer, that is a shape. And if I click, I would turn that into a text box right now because I never locked that layer. So if I want, if I don't want to access that, if I want to lock that background and not see it as a shape, I need to lock the layer under the layers window. So I'll go and lock the layer and you'll notice that now it no longer gives me that little round shape, meaning I am not clicking on the box to make it a text box. So now it allows me to, on layer one, click and drag to create a text box. And I am gonna select that and I'm gonna add text into it. So I'm gonna go type, fill with uh, placeholder text. Now, let's say for example, I have this text on top of my image. You will notice that it becomes almost illegible. So what happens if I'm gonna close the collapse my uh, layers window? Now, what happens if I want to have my, my image sort of push that text aside so that it does not overlap? Well, that's where this text wrap utility comes in. So if I want to make sure that my text, and you'll see the little icons, they'll indicate what they do. If you want to make sure that your text, it's not, it wraps around whatever image it happens to be, you select the object, the actual, uh, uh, the actual uh, container, the, the frame and then go to the its text wrap and select how you want that text to appear around that container. So whether you want it to be wrap around or if you want bounding box, which is the bounding box around the actual object, the circle, or if you want it to be broken so that text appears on top of and below of the actual uh, image, you can also uh, say, for example, let me select that again. Let me actually undo this really quick so that I go back to where I have access to the frame. If I select the frame, I can have it um, on top of only, and that's because it would be up here. It's not showing because I don't have enough space above for the, for the text to show. Uh, let me actually maintain this option right here, the um, wrap around, which is probably the one that will be most widely used by everybody. So if we if we have that, you see how the text gets butted against my object. And that's because that's what that option gives me, the wrap around to the shape. So if I want to push that away, if I want to push the spacing away from the actual shape with the object selected, with the shape, with the actual uh, frame selected, I can go to object and then I can start changing um, things such as under that text wrap option that we see, actually it's best if I access it through properties. So if I go to the, the properties area and I look at the text wrap options, I can go ahead and increase the amount of pixels that this will have around, almost like a, a buffer between the actual shape and the text that you have around it. So if I increase that value here, and by the way, you'll notice that they're all uh, controlled by one at this point, but you can always change the, the sorry, let me to close that. Um, you can change by clicking this off when it's available, depending on the option that you're choosing and uh, separating both uh, vertical or horizontal spacing around your, t your object. In this case, it's not available because that's a circle. So if it was a rectangle, it would give me all four options separately. Now, let me start increasing this value and you'll notice that I'm creating spacing around that shape in which the text will not be bumping against the actual shape, giving me a much cleaner layout. And when I press W, you'll see that the spacing actually has been created. So that gives me the ability to create what we would call a margin around the actual object that is being text wrapped. At the same time, you also have options for your text window. So if you, right, if you click on that and you either right click to go to text frame options, or you go to uh, object text frame options, same axis, you'll have access to whether you want uh, spacing on your text boxes, whether you wanna have it, say for example, you don't want this text to butt against the top or the left, you have the ability to increase the spacing around that box as well. So you do that by doing what we call inset spacing. So you have control over how that, how that text is laid out inside that text box so that you have more detailed control of the text layout. You also have the ability to increase the amount of columns in here. You can also tell it uh, how much gutter you want within those columns. You have, you have the ability to control each column independently and all that. Once again, all of these are things that you should see in your InDesign course and you should have seen in your, in your InDesign course if, you're taking that, if you took that class. 
If you're in the graphic design block of, of the program, then this would be familiar to you. If you're not, with the principles that I'm showing you, with the basic things that I'm showing you, you should be able to work perfectly fine to create your layouts the way you would in Animate or a, in Adobe XD in terms of actually setting up prototypes for interactivity. So let's go ahead and click OK on that. And that pretty much gives me the ability now to, if I don't like the position of this object because I've already preset all those things under the text wrap options, as I move this, you will notice that the text behind it will modify itself to allow my object to maintain that text wrapping around it as I move it around, which is extremely helpful in order to uh, help me work out my layouts and, you know, for what I have envisioned for my specific application. So uh, once again, this is how you control uh, object uh, set um, effects and transparency for objects and how you uh, actually can work out text wrapping and text uh, options for the text boxes that you create in InDesign.